And good day, everybody. I want to welcome you to TGD Today. It's Tech Talk with Al Cloy. Dr. Grind is in the house along with HR3, Hugh Roy III, and George Honeycutt. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good morning, sir. Good morning. How's everybody? Hanging in there, Hugh. Good, good. Doing fantastic. All right, Al. We, we know you've got some kind of good subject to talk about, so definitely, what are we definitely. what are we going to hit today? Well, we're going to talk about iron heads um, and, you know, choosing the right iron head for your game. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's a lot of um, different options out there on the market, um, and, you know, you don't want to be beating a dead dog uh, playing an iron head that's not suitable for your particular swing type or your playing ability. Mm-hmm. Um, so picking the iron head is very important. You know, we're, we talk about shafts a lot. Uh, it's kind of like the engine in the car. Um, this is the chassis um, right here. Okay. So we want to make sure that we find a club that's suitable for that particular individual. Okay. Um, so first, if you want to, we'll start out um, with the, a pure blade. Um, this is basically designed, um, you know, for tour players, um, extremely low handicappers. Um, if you'll notice, um, it's, it's got a lot of mass, you know, in the back of the head. Um, there's no um, cavity back in this club, uh, nor is there any type of an undercut. It's just a pure blade, okay? So to give you an idea, the handicap range on a, on a blade club like mm-hmm. this right here, you're looking at anywhere from between um, zero handicap, you know, or negative up to a, about a four handicap. So, you know, if you're a 15, you know, 15, 20 handicapper, you know, hitting something like this is, is, is not probably the best idea in the world because there's not that much forgiveness. Um, you you're know, being awful polite. I'd say it's probably about stupid. Yes, sir. To be perfectly honest, because the sweet spot on that thing's about the size of a dime. That's correct. And that's correct. That, that's where you've you got to produce a lot of club head speed to get any reaction uh, off of club that. Club head speed, but also consistency in your impact zone with you know how you're mm-hmm. hitting shots. And if you're a 15 to 20 handicapper, you don't do that very well. That's correct. So that's you know, correct. find something that's got the and Al, let yep. Al finish his sure. story now. Yeah. So um, you know, you're going to want something you know that's that's more forgiving. That's got a perimeter weighted you know, club. That's got a cavity back. You know, for the higher handicap player. Um, the club's just more forgiving and more user friendly, um, so you know that that's that's the deal the deal with that. But there's less workability and a little less feel. Uh, everybody wants to keep in mind, you know, blades are designed for feel and for workability. Okay, um, these guys are already hitting the ball where they you know straight. You know, they're just they want they're they're going somebody's going to play draws, fades, knockdowns. You know, that, that has a lot of versatility in their game mm-hmm. and the ability to, to perform these shots, you know, in, in, you know, fully. Okay. Okay, so that's the – this is the Mizuno MP4. So um, next what we'll do is we'll go to one that's got just a little bit more forgiveness to it. Uh, this here is the MP15. Um, now, if you'll notice, it, it starts to get just a little bit of a cavity back mm-hmm. right in here. So they start moving the weight out. To start perimeter weighting at this point. Okay. Um, and this particular one here is a is a good example of um, what we like to call a, a muscle back. Okay. A, a muscle back still has a lot of mass right in the sweet spot of the club, like the blade has. But with a muscle back, they've incorporated forgiveness in the toe and the heel. Okay. So this is when people refer to a muscle back. This is exactly what they're talking about. Now, isn't that uh, two different materials? One material right behind the sweet spot and another material the head is composed of. That's correct, yeah. But you can also, get just with one material as well. Okay. You know, but th- this particular one here does have two different materials. So they're adding mass to the club, but yet they've got to consider the overall weight of the head. That's correct. So Very that's so. why they use different alloys. Yes. That's correct. Okay. Definitely, definitely. And then just to kind of give you an idea, the handicap range on that club um, goes from like a zero handicapper up to an eight. Okay. Okay, so, you know, if you're – that, that'll give a good – that's a good idea and a good range for that particular playing ability. And give you um, good feel, too, as well. And, and I would assume, Hugh, that the, the zero to eight handicapper, as it just referred to, they could also play the blades. But what I'm getting to is is that would be a head that you could use in a combo – you know, type of oh, set, a combination you change set. change it up, yes. So use the blades for, say, your wedges, nine, eight, seven, six, 
And then when you get into the harder hitting clubs, the five, the four, the three, the two, mm -hmm. then you would use the little bit more kick in the in the bottom yeah, end. Use a little more forgiveness, a little bigger yeah. sweet spot. Yeah, okay. and, and that's yeah. I think that's what as Al keeps yep. going here, you're going to see that. We're going to definitely dive into that. Okay, you got it. Um, so next up, um, this is the uh, Mizuno MP54, and um, this is still in the MP line, which is classified as a player's iron, um, but it has a more perimeter weighting. And then they've incorporated an undercut feature in this particular iron. Um, and what that undercut feature does is it enhances the sweet spot. It actually makes it a little bit larger um, for miss hits. Um, so, like, say, for instance, this particular iron, handicap-wise, goes from a 0 to a 12 handicap. Okay. Okay, so, and that's, that. this right here is, a, is um, what you see on the shelf. A lot of clubs, you know, have this feature. Um, you know, we got two people to thank for this design. Um, one is Karsten Solheim with Ping, you know, with the perimeter weighting. You know, he was way ahead of his time with that. And, and the second person we got to thank for this is Eli Calloway for the undercut. Um, that was that was his baby with the Big Berthas when they came out. Mm -hmm. and, and you know where he got that from, though? No, sir. Wilson. Got it from Wilson. So, remember, Wilson. Remember the reflex? Oh, yeah. The Wilson the reflex is the first iron. Ca it came out probably late 70s okay early mm -hmm. 80s to where it was actually you you could hit five irons anywhere from 170 yards to 190 yards but it was inconsistent because okay. they haven't they hadn't developed the actual technology to control that amount of I'm rebound you. effect yes but that was the first club that ever came out with something like that to give you that rebound, rebound effect, effect. Yep. so and then the you know mr callaway and mr solheim yeah they took it further from a scientific standpoint developed it to where you could control it mm -hmm. yes sir Yes, sir. So this um, this is a great great iron right here. I, you know, and, and all these clubs that we're looking at here are forged material instead of cast. Uh, forged clubs are going to cost you a bit more. Um, the process of manufacturing is far much more intense uh, to forge a club than to cast a club. Um, a lot of people out there may not know the difference in a forged and a cast club. What the difference is is a forged club. They start with a solid piece of billet metal. Um, and then what happens at that point, they use hydraulic presses and they press and they press and they press um, until they get the shape that they want. Right. Um, and then from that point, then it's, it's hand ground, sanded, smooth. Now, the old way used to be hammer forging where they would just take a hammer and just beat it into submission until they got it to the shape that they wanted. And then they would grind and sand and hone and, you know, get it where they want. But the... That's, that's a forging process. Um, now, a cast process, um, they actually have molds for each individual head. And what they'll do is they liquefy the metal, uh, heat it up, and then they pour it into the mold. The mold cools, heads pop out, and then they do the, the sand and the finish and get all the nicks and, and then go through the, the finish process of putting a final finish on the club, whether that be a brush finish, a... Uh, a, a chrome finish or a, this new black finishes that are mm -hmm. popular right now right um so that's so I, that's one thing i just kind of wanted to let people know because a lot of times you get a, i do get that question in the shop a lot you know what's the real difference in a forged head and a cast head right and to give you an idea a good forged head you know in a retail environment um just the head alone you're looking at about fifty dollars fifty sixty five dollars we're in a retail environment, um, just a head alone, a cast head, you're looking at $7.95. Yeah. I mean, you're looking so, at, and plus, and, and uh, the, Mr. <laughs> you know, Ping did that, George, too. They, they're the ones that, you know, a lot of people did cast clubs, but they actually made the first real quality cast club. Big time. Yeah. You know, and it was a playability club. I mean, you saw the Calcavecchias and, you know, mm -hmm. all the great players on tour that went with Ping, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Inman, John Inman, those guys. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it, it's a it's a harder feeling metal than a forged. That was a big step, though, for the tour players back then. Oh, it was huge. To get them to do it was like pulling teeth, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was almost impossible. But they created such a good club that gave you so many different options with the perimeter weighting and the way they did it. Yeah. You know, then they went to the beryllium instead of the That's what I was just saying, say, the nickel, stuff. you know, in you know, some of the... And, bit, and, yeah. and the metals changed, but they could still forge them. Yes. A forged club, the reason people say, well, I ordered them and it's taking forever to get them. Well, folks... The, 
they don't just pop them in and pop them out. These right. things have some hand work done to them to get them the way you want them. A lot and of hand work. And that's why they're so much more expensive. Right. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It takes longer to produce. It takes longer to produce. Yep. Okay, next up we'll have a look at the MPH-5. Um, and this one here is a, is a great-looking iron. Um, I'll go ahead. And it's, it's, it actually is, has a little bit of a hollow section in it. Um, but it's a it's a great iron. Um, it's a little bit more forgiving. Um, let's see the H5 level. Um, you're looking at um, a zero to a 16 handicap. And what we're doing right now is we're using these in like the three irons, the four irons, um, two irons for guys that are not big hybrid lovers. You still got a few guys out there that just have not. They just don't like the look of the hybrid. You mm -hmm. know, for whatever reason. You know, mm -hmm. they just they just just you know they're not comfortable with them right well what we're doing now and the industry in general is doing is they're making hybrids or uh, iron hybrids it basically it's a it's a cross between an iron and a hybrid it's called a utility yep so that's um that that's what's Very going good. on thank that's you that's pretty impressive thank you can't you. beat it thank i you. didn't know you had that yeah there you go hey he's one hey, you can't beat it i studied there that's right go. no good mercy <laughs> So this is the, the MP um, H5, H meaning hybrid, um, and it's, a, it's, it's basically a hybrid iron. Um, so that's that iron. Now, now can you get mm -hmm. those hybrid irons, the H5, can you get that down in a 9 iron and an 8 iron and a 7 iron? That, yes, you sure can. And that particular, that particular model, now let me just double check and make sure that I'm telling you correct. Yeah, the MP H5 is available from a 1 iron to a pitching wedge. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. And, um, you know, I can just kind of, to show the viewers, the, um, there's the cavity back, how it's cut out and hollowed out in these clubs. Mm -hmm. um, so if you was to cut that club open, this is what you would see right here. Um, you would see a hollow area. Um, so the face is ultra thin on these things, so it makes them more responsive than a, than a thick, thicker-faced iron. Um, so that's, that's what the deal with that is and you notice okay. george as you he goes through these clubs from the lower handicap to the higher the sole gets wider that's correct mm. the top line gets thicker and mm -hmm. so you know again it's like we talk about all the time check your ego at the door and go with what works best right right definitely okay now what we'll do is we'll jump into the um, jpx line um, the jpx is considered their um, uh, game enhancement user-friendly line um, the first club out that we'll look at is um, this one's the, the JPX 850. Um, this is a really good looking iron head. Um, it's perimeter weighted. Um, it's got an undercut to it. Um, they've used some new metals on this particular iron to make the longevity. The, the clubs last a little longer. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a this is a great um, user friendly. Uh, iron and the handicap level on this one right here runs from a six to a sixteen. Mm -hmm. So and look at the yep, look at the sole. Look you at the sole. How much wide the sole mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Top lines a little thicker. Yeah. Has a little more offset on it. Um, one thing you'll notice, like the blades, when you're looking at a blade versus something like this, offset. Um, this club right here has virtually no offset on it. Um, where this one, this one has a has a few degrees. So there, there's definitely. Um, you know, a little bit of difference in the hosel, um, a little bit of difference in the sole, and a little bit of difference in the top line. So, you know, all those things, you know, play a role in how that club performs and where the center of gravity on that club's at. So the 850, is that forged or cast? The 850 is forged. It's the first forged JPX that they've done. Okay. All right. So, and it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a modulus head. The outside is forged, and then the, there's actually an insert in it. Um, so it's a, it's an interesting little iron. Um, okay, and then next, let's see here. We'll go with the JPX EZ. Um, let's see. We'll go with the forged model first. This is the JPX EZ forged. Um, like I say, it's one of the first forged irons. Um, this one right here is designed for a handicap level of um, 8 to 18. Okay. Okay, it's got a acoustic um, area in the back that absorbs a little bit of sound um, they made the faces on these things so thin to get them responsive that they just kind of make a make an odd sound if you if you don't have um, you know something in the cavity um, so that's what they've designed in this it's basically a muffler 
Okay. Um, and it, it and it helps absorb a little shock and a little jar, um, but also kind of quietens the club down a little bit. So it's not so much a game improver, but it's more of a cosmetic aesthetic type of. Yep, it, it has to do with the acoustics of the club, you know, and the cosmetics. Okay. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so that's that bad boy. And then we're going to start getting into the, what I like to call, you know, the really, you know, really user-friendly stuff. Um, first, we'll have a look here. This is the JPX uh, 850. Um, this is a great iron um, for anybody that struggles to get the ball airborne um, because now all of a sudden we've got this gigantic sole. Um, and There's then more weight in the bottom more weight to in the help bottom. get the club to where you hit down and the ball helps the ball get in the air. Definitely. It has a lower center of gravity. So it, it will definitely pick up um, a lot better. Um, it has an undercut on it as well. Um, like I say, sole width is tremendous. Um, the top line is healthy. It's even got a little bit more offset on it. Um, let's see, the handicap range on that bad boy is a 10 to a 25. So that's if you're in that range, you know, that's kind of what you want to be looking for. You know, it's something that's, you know, that's really forgiving. It's, it's going to make the round enjoyable. You know, there's no reason in, you know, if, you've got, if you're a high handicapper, you know, frustrating yourself, you know, with a blade, you know, when this technology's out there, you know, hey, man, use it. I mean, it's... And to be honest, I don't care if you're a good player, if you're a scratch. Get you a head like that in a 3-4 iron, and now all of a sudden your long irons, you're going to hit them further, you're going to hit them higher, you hit them... It just gives you a lot more benefit and versatility. Oh, definitely, definitely. And then to be lady-friendly, Mizuno's done one in the 850 with a little different insert in the back. It's just got a little little pink kind of going on there, which is kind of neat. And then and actually, that head combined with the Oroshi shaft, the forty, <laughs> the 40, 40 gram, gram shaft, shaft, yeah. You know, that's one of the lighter irons Big in time. the industry. Yes. So. Yeah, the shaft options that they have are all. You impressed? I knew that too. I, 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 well, you know, I, I figured since you've been doing your club stuff, like, yeah. you, you know this kind of new <laughs> stuff. See, you, you, having knowledge is a good thing. Yeah, it is. You can't beat it. I stick, feel much better. Stick club pole or a ball bat. You just yeah. can't beat it. Okay. Now we're going to go to the JPX EZ. Okay. Um, this one right here is, is also an ultra game improving iron. It's probably, you know, one of the most forgiving irons that they've made to date. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got, you know, this massive, you know, massive thick sole to it. Um, it's got the thick top line, a little bit of offset. Um, it's undercut as well. Uh, let's see, the handicap range on this particular iron right here runs from uh, 10 to a 35 handicap. Okay. So, you know, if you're in that neck of the woods, um, you know, you want to be looking at something, you know, very similar to this in design. Um, it's, it's basically not far off the 850 that we just discussed. Uh, it just has a different look, but um, they're not far off each other. And then um, last but not least... Um, let's see here. Here we go. This is the what a lot of people are going to now, you know, in the place of like the three irons, the four irons, the five irons. Um, but this is the JPX Fly High. Uh, it's, a, it's a total hybrid iron. Um, now, this being a hybrid iron, it's called a DIR, which means direct iron replacement. Um, a lot of the hybrids that are on the market tend to go further than the iron that they're actually replacing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's just, just our nature is to build something that goes, you know, better or further. Sure. Well, that's all, that's fine and dandy, but, you know, if it's, if you're missing a club because the three iron's performing more than it should and your four iron's not, you know, performing normally, then there's a gap there. You know, so yeah, bigger well, gap. Bigger yeah. gap. So what they've done is they they call these DIR, which is direct iron replacements. They're designed to go the distance that that iron would have went, not what the distance a hybrid goes. Okay, which is which is interesting. Um, but it's it's a great club. Um, they offer it in the three, the four, the five, and the six, and they stop at the six. Um, I wish they made these on down to the seven, the eight, the nine. And um, even the pitching wedge, because I've got some um, seniors and some ladies that are in, I've got in full hybrid sets now, right. that would never go back to a, um, right. a normal club. I've had seniors in ready to give the game up because they could not get the ball airborne. Hmm. 
that you now put them in a set of hybrid irons. Well, you bring up a good point. I know a couple of companies that do break it down to the seven. And then interestingly, they hit those direct iron replacement clubs, whether it's Mizuno or somebody else. They hit those so well. Yes, sir. And then they get to their regular iron clubs mm -hmm. and they struggle. Yes, sir. And they'll, they'll have 20 or 30 yard mm. gap distances between the capability of their swing in relation to the club that they have in their hand. That's correct. Yes, and sir. Good point. So, That's a very good point. You know, your comment about taking it further down into the, you know, the higher number of the bag, nine iron pitching wedge, even, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Um, makes a lot of sense. Yep. A lot yes, of sense. Yes. So. You know, they'll, they'll, you know, and it's just, just exactly what you said. You know, I'll have a customer that'll come in the shop, you know, and, and we've got them in, you know, say like a three to a six, mm -hmm. you know, and then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you know, they start asking, what is a seven? Can I get a seven? You know, then can I get an eight? Right. You know, well, go ahead and well, give me a nine and a pitching wedge. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, they are, you know, way, way much user friendly. And the key thing with it is, is you don't have to take a divot you know, to get these things to function, mm -hmm. which most irons, except for some of the really ultra user-friendly stuff with the thick soles and the big undercuts, you can get away without taking a divot. With with these hybrids, um, hybrid irons, you don't have to take a divot. And the, like you take your older golfers, you know, they just, they're just, they don't generate enough club head well, speed or got, hit down in their sweepers. If you've got arthritis, if you've yeah. got shoulder problems, if you've got, you know, hand and wrist issues, um, you know, these, these direct iron replacement clubs just make a lot of sense mm -hmm. because it's why not hit a club that's, that makes the game fun. Oh, again, no doubt. That's again, it. That's it. Instead of painful. Yes. Instead of getting the vibrative effects of trying to hit an iron. That's correct. So, you know, as far as I, I, I participated in the demo day yesterday in the company that we were doing the demo with, um, they have now come out with a seven um, hybrid, let's yes. say. It's not a direct iron replacement. It's a hybrid. Seven hybrid. And, yeah. But it's intended to replace the seven iron. Exactly. And that little club, we had, we had two. We had a men's version and a woman's version. Yes, sir. And those two clubs were the most popular hit in this six-hour demo day yesterday. Yes, sir. Yes, Those sir. clubs, we took the wrapper <laughs> off of it. I mean, literally yesterday morning, I took the plastic off of both those heads. And by the end of the day, they were just beat up. Yep. I mean, they, they, you could tell hundreds of balls had been hit. But, you know, you hear people talk like, especially the women, my seven iron just has been getting harder and harder and harder to hit. And I only hit it. 60 yards or I only hit it 80 yards yep. and they were hitting the seven hybrid and they were hitting it 90 yards That's or correct. they were hitting it 100 yards mm -hmm. or they were hitting it you know 80 if they were down in the 60s with their club mm -hmm. and they just I gotta have this yep I gotta have this now can I get it in the eight can I get it in the nine well, it's just it's such a That's game it. improvement That's club exactly That's exactly what yep. you know it's a game improvement club but you see their face easier. you see uh, men women uh, old young it didn't matter especially if they're starting out a junior we had oh, a, yeah. we had a junior yesterday a uh, 12 year old that was hitting some of the new clubs and i handed him the seven and he just took it and he's just ripping this little thing oh, he's yeah. just he's just popping it out there like you know 100 105 yards and he turns around and looks at his dad and he goes i've never hit a seven iron that far yep. you know and he had this nice little high ball flight it mm -hmm. sat down and you know, he just turned around and goes, man, I need one of these. And, of course, Dad just said, come on, let's go get it. Well, so. and, and, you know, I think, you know, with everything that's been said and what you've showed, you know, it just shows people that, you know, go see someone like Al. Go see a club person, a club maker that knows what they're doing, mm -hmm. you know, and get fitted and get into the right equipment. Use what's best for your game. Check, like, you hear me say it, and I'm, I say it all the time, and I'm yeah. sorry, but check your ego at, at the, the door. door. Right. Yeah. And, and get what you play best with because you want to go out there and have fun you don't want to oh, be no miserable doubt. no and life's too you short. know move yeah. on with it and 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 go with what's best for well, you especially i don't care what club you're playing now whether you've got five-year-old set or a brand new set you're you paid a lot of money for it yes sir and you might as well take advantage of the game improvement technologies yeah, that have been no adapted question. into yeah. 
not just Mizuno, but pretty much every manufacturer out there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they make their money off of selling you a club, pure and simple. Take that out of the equation. These clubs also have improved dramatically to where you can now go out and enjoy the game. You can maybe lower your handicap. You can have more fun and enjoy the game, you know, that it's intended to be. Mm -hmm. It's a recreational I sport. Yep. Well, That's I, some great info, Al. Yep. Really. Thank you. And Good I'll just stuff. give like one real quick one. You know, I've got a, I've got one gentleman. He's a super, super nice guy. He's, he comes up to the practice center quite a lot. You know, he's an older gentleman. He's retired. And, um, you know, he's got a set of um, blades with um, S300 shafts in them. You know, he's – and, um, you know, it's it, – how much – he would um, get on better with, you know, a more user-friendly set. Mm. I mean, it would be ridiculous. It's almost a night and a day. It would be a night and day change. Yeah. But in his mind, he says, <coughs> well, my swing's not all that good, so I don't think I should invest in clubs. You know, that's his, that was, that's his mentality. Mm. You know, until my swing gets better, I'm not going to invest in clubs. Yeah, but, but with that equipment, he's beating a dead dog. Oh yeah, right. you know right. what I mean. So, you know, and it's, he'll it's be the first one to go in the clubhouse and complain about his game, and oh, I don't have any fun anymore, and oh, I can't break this number or whatever his you know objective was for that day. When in actuality, the swing's not all that bad. No, no, uh -huh. it's producing probably you know what he can at his age, efficiency wise. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's now. The club that's holding him back. Big Technically, time. it's like driving a flipping Pinto in a NASCAR race. Yep, that's it. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's exactly it. what it Good is. Good point. Yeah. yeah just I mean, hope you don't get hit in the rear end. Exactly, because you're not going to keep <laughs> up. Point. You can't go. So that's it. You're going to stay in the infield on that one. Yeah, you're yeah. going to be yeah. sitting in the pit. So you get black flag. You know. Yeah. Thanks for the info, yeah. Al. That was yes, awesome. Sir. Thank you. Good. Yes, Very sir. Good. Thank you guys for the help. All right, another tech talk with Al Cloyd, of course, being brought to you on TGD today. TGD Radio and TV are produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for thegolfdirector.com. When visiting the Golf Director, be sure to check out our featured course pages where you'll find up-to-date information about course conditions, specials, and much more. Need help with your next golf vacation? Just, Just call, call Dave. Dave. Give us a call at 844-GO-GOLF-1, 844-464-6531. All of our programming is archived for listening and viewing on demand. Catch up on any show you may have missed, click on the TGD radio or the TGD TV tabs in the menu screen at thegolfdirector.com. We're now available on over 1 billion devices at iTunes, Audio Realm, TuneIn, YouTube, Ustream, Roku, Blueberry, and Myrtle Beach Golf App. For Dr. Grind, Al Cloyd, HR3, Hugh Roy III, I'm your host, George Honeycutt, and we want to thank you and our producer behind the booth for tuning in. There's more TGD golf news and information coming up next. <laughs>